welcome back to part two of subject verb agreement. As I mentioned to you in the first part, it's a very detailed to understand um, the importance of your subjects agreeing with your verbs. There are 10 different rules and I covered the first five rules in the first video and now let's complete uh, the last five important rules and hopefully it will help you to understand how to pick out subjects and verbs and um, the importance of their agreement. So let's take a look now at the fifth rule which deals with compound subjects. A compound subject, compound means two, so a compound subject consists of two nouns which will be connected by a joining word. So keep in mind that subjects that are connected by the joining word and are generally plural, and if they're plural, then the verb must also be plural to agree with the subject. Take a look at these examples. The first one, John and Ernie, there are two of them, join with the word and, the two subjects, John and Ernie, so the verb would be plural, are. The second one, the living room and the dining room. You've got two subjects, the living room, you got the dining room, so the verb is plural. They need to be cleaned. The third example, walking and swimming, a double subject, compound. You've got walking is one subject, swimming is another. They're joined with the joining word and, so it takes on the plural verb are. Now let's look at this next rule. Singular words, which are joined by the words or, nor, either, or, or neither, nor, also pronounced either, or, neither, nor, are singular. Let's look at examples. Neither Jim nor Bob. So you do have Jim, Bob, but they're joined with the word nor, and that means it doesn't mean both of them, and would mean the two, but it's not one or the other, so it becomes singular. So the word nor is always singular, so neither Jim nor Bob would take on the singular verb, is home. Or either is another word in this list, either you or Jim, so it's one or the other, it would be singular as well, will polish, singular. And is the television or the radio playing, again, the word or, so it would be singular. The television or the radio is playing, is the verb, so it's singular. So when a singular word and a plural word are joined by or or nor, the verb agrees with the subject that's closest to it. So now we're taking it a step further and let's follow with these examples. So in these examples, first one, neither the supervisor nor her co-workers are attending the conference on Friday. So let's look very closely at this sentence. You've got the supervisor, you've got the co-workers, and you've got neither nor. So how do you know if it's singular or plural? Neither the supervisor nor her co-workers, this is how you, you look at it. You look at the subject that's closest to the verb. So when you have two subjects using neither nor or either or, you take the second subject closest to the verb. So the verb is are attending. There's your verb. This is the verb. So the, the noun that's closest to the verb is co-workers, not supervisor. Co-workers, so it would be plural. Co-workers, the verb would be plural, are attending. Or in this next example, either the teacher or the principal is attending the conference on anti-bullying. You've got either or, you've got the two subjects. You've got teacher, you've got the principal, your verb is here, is attending. So you have to look at which noun is closest to the verb. It's the principal. So the principal is singular, is attending the conference. So the singular noun principal is closer to the verb, so the verb is singular. In this example, co-workers is plural. That's closest to the verb, so it would be plural because co-workers is plural. So I hope uh, 
that rule is, is clear to you because it is a tricky one. The sixth rule is using the words don't and doesn't. The word does and the contraction doesn't are both used with singular nouns. And the word do and the contraction don't um, are used with plural nouns. Now let's look at this list. It'll make it a bit easier. Does and doesn't. A person does, he does, she doesn't, and it does or doesn't. She does or doesn't. And do and don't will always take on the plural. People do, like John and Joe do. We do, I do, they don't, you don't. So those are just words you have to remember as to whether they take on the singular or the plural. Let's look at these examples. It doesn't look cold outside today. So we've got doesn't. It doesn't. He does not want me to come to the party. They don't know the answer to the question. And I do know that I am correct this time. So you just have to follow um, those rules. The seventh rule is relative pronoun subjects. The relative pronouns who, which, and that are singular when they refer to a singular noun and they're plural when they refer to a plural noun. Let me give you an example to explain. <clears throat> Excuse me. I met a man who is from Canada. So in this example, who is referring to one man. I met a man who. That one man is from Canada, so it has to be singular. The verb is is singular. The next example, I met three boys who are from England. Who is referring? Who did you meet? Boys, plural. So who refers to the noun boys? So the verb has to be plural. So I met three boys who are. They are. It's plural. My dress, which is 10 years old, is no longer in style. It's one dress that you're looking at. Which dress? It's my one dress is 10 years old. So it has to be singular, is, because it's referring to the dress. And in the last example, my sister collects old Barbie dolls that are still in good condition. Um, that is referring to the dolls. She collects Barbie dolls that there are more than one are in good condition. So since that refers to the dolls, you have to take on the plural verb are. My sister collects Barbie dolls that are. So this verb are is plural. Now, if these rules are a little bit difficult, please go back and review this video. Just go over the rules um, carefully, stop the video and replay it, and you will find that it will help you um, dramatically if you do that. The eighth rule, noun plurals in form. And what does that mean? Some nouns are plural in form, but they're singular in meaning. And let me show you with an example. Some such words are the words news, measles, and mumps. So the first one, the news is spreading all over the world. Now news is called a plural noun in form and it would take on singular, a singular uh, verb. Although news sounds like it's plural, the news, you don't say the news are spreading, it's the news is spreading. And in the second example, measles, um, it also takes on the singular verb. Measles is, oh, a very um, difficult or is a horrible disease. I left out a word there. And then, many words ending in ICS may also be singular or plural. So let's take a look at some examples of these. Words like ethics, economics, athletics, hygienics. These words are singular um, when they are used to refer to a practice or you're referring to a subject. So home economics, which you think is plural, no, it is a subject that you take in high school. So it's one of the X words. So home economics is, takes the singular verb, a great high school subject for both males and females. 
Politics is a very interesting choice of study for the young student. So politics ends in the ICS, it takes a singular verb, is. It's the subject politics. Um, and then the last one, the revolutionary, the revolutionaries' politics are rather alarming. In this example, you're not using it the same way. You're not using it as a subject or a practice. You're looking at the actual political beliefs of the revolutionaries. So in this sense, it would be plural because you're not using it anymore as a subject that you're studying in school. So it's the plural R. The ninth rule, titles and groups of words. Any group of words referring to a single thing or thought uses the single verb. So let's look at this more closely. The title of a book, a play, a film, a TV show, a musical composition, or any other work of art that refers to one thing, it will therefore take on the singular verb. Let me show you an example. If you're talking about the show Jeopardy that's on every day, you would just say Jeopardy, that's the name of the show, it would take on the singular verb, it is a very popular TV show. Or in this one, the United States, uh, it is made up of many states, the United States, but it works as a unit. Um, it's one thought, one title, so it's singular. You wouldn't say the United States are. You'd say all the different states are, but if you're looking at it as the country, you say the United States is singular. The Merry Wise of Windsor, which is the name of a play, is because the names of plays would take on singular. And if you enjoy watching the soap opera All My Children, again, it's a TV show, so is a highly watched soap opera. Because we said here that the titles of books, plays, films, shows, musical compositions, artwork are in singular form. They take the singular verb. And the very last rule, and then you'll be happy to know we're done. This is the tenth and final rule, and that is words of um, dealing with amounts and times. Words or phrases that express periods of time, weights, fractions, measures, and amounts of money are usually singular. Let's take a look at some examples. The first one, $50. Now, dollars is normally plural, but when you're looking at a, an amount of money, you'd say $50 is what the company charges per day to rent the steam cleaner. So it's the singular because you're looking at a measurement or amount of money. Three quarters of the pie, again, three quarters is a fraction, so it takes on the singular. You don't say three quarters of the pie are missing. It's three quarters, it acts as a singular, it's that section of the pie is missing. 10 days, you're looking at it as a unit of time. 10 days is the recommended recovery from this type of flu because it's a period of time. $7 an hour is singular. Again, because it's, it's an amount of money that you're earning, so it's below the minimum wage for employees. It's referring to amount of money. And a million dollars is the winning prize. It's a, a lump sum of money that you can win, so it takes on the singular verb. So lots, I've bombarded you with a lot of different rules on subject verb agreement. Again, please review both the videos. Feel free to stop and um, look at the questions carefully, um, analyze what I'm saying in these videos, and please contact me if you have any questions um, about any of these rules. I'm glad to give you some extra practice questions and um, I'll give you assistance if you need it. And then you could just uh, contact me within the website in the English Corner .com. So uh, good luck with this and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Bye bye.